In this video, we will show you how to replace your driver's side exhaust manifold catalytic converter assembly. Let's get started. Let's get this job started by getting under the hood. We're going to make our way all the way to the back side on the driver's side bank of the engine. Back here, you're going to find that you have an electrical connector that leads all the way down to your upstream O2 sensor. We're going to dislodge this O2 sensor from its mounting point. After that, we can disconnect the sensor. I'll use some long nose pliers on this, grab onto these two little tabs, gently squeeze them, and pull it off of its mounting point. The next thing you want to do is grab onto this tab right here. We're going to lift this up to unlock it and then slide it apart. Give it a quick check for corrosion. Once it's separated, go ahead and rest it aside. Now let's make our way underneath the driver's side of the engine. We're going to continue on removing the O2 sensor from the catalytic converter manifold assembly. To do that, you want to make sure you have an O2 sensor socket. You can tell it has a slot going through it for the wiring. We'll put this in position and then continue by turning the O2 sensor counterclockwise and removing it. Give your O2 sensor a thorough inspection. Assuming it looks good, set it aside. Now that we have the O2 sensor out of there, let's continue on to the rearward mounting point on the catalytic converter. We're going to have to remove both of these mounting nuts that hold the flange together. Use a 15 millimeter to remove each of these mounting nuts. Commonly, when you're trying to remove the mounting nuts, the stud will come out with it. That's a good thing, because we also need to remove the studs anyways. To easily remove the stud, you can either use a stud removal tool, which will slide over this and it grips onto it, or just use a twisty socket. Let's put it on here, give it a couple taps. Go ahead and recycle those mounting studs. At this point, you're going to want to safely raise and support the front of the vehicle so the left front wheel is off the ground. Once you've done that, continue on to removing each of your six 21 millimeter lug nuts and then the wheel. With the wheel out of the way, we're going to remove the inside fender liner. To remove this, you're going to find that you have several push clips that hold it in place and a couple of Phillips head screws. Commonly, for push clips, you just get underneath the center, pull that out, it'll unlock, and you can remove the entire thing. Now as we're removing these, you might find that yours has more push clips than ours. Ours is missing a couple. Along this area, you should be able to find that you have several Phillips head screws. There should be a screw here. Ours is missing. And there's going to be another one under here. Remove your fender liner. Mm -hmm. 
With the splash shield out of the way, we can have a clear view of the exhaust manifold heat shield. To remove the heat shield, you're going to find that you have four 10 millimeter headed bolts holding it in place. Let's start removing all of the mounting bolts. There's one. Next one's just above that. On our application, our forward bolt is broken. There it is. Let's reach in here and carefully remove that shield, bringing it down through the bottom. Generally for this, you're going to have to flex it a little bit and sometimes even use a pry bar. Remove your shield. Now we can start dismounting the manifold from the engine. When you do this, it's important to make sure you start from the outsides and then make your way towards the center. To remove these, I'll start with the outboard 14 millimeter nut on the front. There's that one. Now I'm gonna move to the rear. For that one, the stud came out. That's okay. To remove the majority of this mounting hardware, you're going to have to use a 14 millimeter. You'll notice you also have some bolts. For those, use a 17 millimeter. There's that one. There's that one. Now let's move to the top rear. There's that one. Now that we have that mounting nut nice and loose, we'll go ahead and take it right off of here. There it is. Now you're going to find that you still have one more mounting bolt left. For this mounting bolt, you will use a 15 millimeter socket to remove it. But before you do, we're gonna have to remove each one of our mounting studs that are in place behind the mounting nuts that we had just removed. Let's continue on by removing each of our manifold studs so we can sneak the manifold out of this area. To do this, you want to use an E10 socket. It's an inverted Torx. There's that first one. There's another one. There's another one. Now we can fully remove our final bolt. When we do this, the manifold's gonna wanna drop away from the engine. Be extremely careful. Get that bolt out of here. There it is. 
Now let's make our way underneath the driver's side front of the vehicle, grab onto that manifold catalytic converter assembly, and give it a little wiggle. Carefully pull it out of the vehicle. There it is, friends. Once that's out of there, continue on by removing the gasket. We'll dispose of this properly. The next thing that you want to do is continue on with a piece of sandpaper and a sanding block. We need to sand down the mating surface of the engine where the brand new manifold gasket's going to sit. It's important to never use a sanding disc on this because the head is made out of aluminum and you will ruin it. Okay, at this point, I sanded down the entire engine where our brand new gasket's going to go. I want to try and make sure it's as smooth as possible so I have a perfect seal. Continue on by cleaning up the threads on all of your mounting hardware. Once you have the engine cleaned up, make your way back underneath the vehicle to your mid pipe. You want to make sure you clean up this area. You'll find that you have a small crush gasket that should be on this still. Go ahead and take it right off of there because your new manifold comes with a new one. Now we'll use the sandpaper and try to clean up this area. Now that we have everything fully cleaned, we can continue on with our installation. Start with your brand new O-ring gasket. We're gonna slide it right over the pipe. Press it up against the flange. Now we can install our brand new manifold catalytic converter assembly. We'll slide it into place. Just get it right up there. Once I put it up, I like to put the flange right up against this one here. I'm not gonna put any bolts through here, but you do wanna be extremely careful that this does not fall down and potentially get damaged while you continue. While we're down here, we're also gonna slide the gasket into place. You wanna make sure you have it in the proper orientation. Looking at the center, you'll find that you have a triangle. The triangle needs to be facing up. Also, if you were to look at the gasket from an angle, you'll see that one side has a raised area and the other side's a little concaved. We wanna make sure we have the raised area facing towards the exhaust manifold. So I'll just go ahead and spin this around. Make sure that the triangle's facing up, as I said, and then carefully slide it up there in between the manifold and the engine without damaging the gasket in any way. We'll get this into place through the wheel well. From inside the wheel well, it's gonna be time to put everything together. We're gonna have to slide that gasket up against the manifold. Make sure you line up those mounting bolt holes. After you line that up, continue on by lining up the gasket and the manifold to the engine. Once I get it lined up, I'm just gonna go ahead and start in my mounting bolts. After we have them started, we can continue on with the rest of our mounting hardware. As far as putting any of the bolts in to get them started, you can put them wherever it feels comfortable for you and then just remove them as needed and put them in the proper placement. Now that I have a couple bolts in there started, we can continue on by putting in all of our mounting studs. As you're installing the mounting studs, you wanna go until they feel as though they bought them out against the engine. Once you've done that, continue on trying to turn it just a little bit further to make sure it's completely secure. As I put in each stud, I'll continue on by starting the nut on as well. We're not gonna tighten these yet. That one's bottomed out.
Now that I have several studs and mounting nuts in place, I can continue by removing those two mounting bolts that I temporarily put in place and put them in their proper mounting areas. There's that one. Now that we have all of our mounting hardware started, we'll continue on by snugging it up and then torquing it. It's important to snug this in a specific sequence, starting from the center and making your way outward. To gain access with our torque wrench, we're going to remove the upper air filter housing cover. To remove this, go ahead and pop both these locking clips free. After that, continue on to your mass airflow sensor wire. You'll find that you have one mounting point here on the upper housing. Squeeze the two ears and pull it out of its place. Once it's out of there, you're going to remove the wiring from the mass airflow sensor itself. Where my thumb is, there's a squeeze tab. Give it a little squeeze and pop that up and off of there. Give it a quick inspection for corrosion and set that aside. Continue on to your clamp. We'll use an 8 millimeter or a flathead screwdriver for this. Grab that housing, give it a little wiggle, and remove it from the area. Once you have that off, remove the air filter as well. Now we can start torquing these in the same specific order, starting from the center, making our way out. When we torque these, we'll torque them to 25 foot-pounds.
Now, once you have all of these torqued, it's a good idea to just go around in the same sequence and snug them one more time. The process will be the same. Now we can put in the heat shield from under the vehicle. Just have to kind of work it around a little bit. Should want to slide up in there. Well, it's a real tight squeeze, but I got it up in there. Let's make our way back into the wheel well and insert our four mounting bolts. From inside the wheel well, we can put on those mounting bolts for our shield. Let's try to get all of them lined up. We'll start them in. Once they're all started, you can snug them up. Once you have all of them started, snug them up. Now let's move along to reinstalling our upstream O2 sensor. For this, you want to make sure you turn it in as far as you can by hand so you're sure it's not cross-threading into the pipe. While you're doing this, you also want to be extremely careful not to overly twist your wires. You don't want to damage them. Now we can snug this up. From inside the wheel well, we can also connect our O2 sensor. We'll squeeze this together as far as we can, and then pull down on that gray tab to lock it in position. There we are. Once you have that locked, continue on by pressing it into the top of the valve cover. Let's make our way back under the vehicle. You'll notice with your manifold kit, it came with two brand new studs and two nuts. We're going to have to install the studs. To install these, you wanna make sure that you have a set of 10 by 125 nuts that you can put on this side, lock them together, and then you can use the outboard nut to drive the rest of it into the manifold converter assembly. There we are. Now that we have the stud bottomed out against the manifold, we'll continue on by holding the first nut here, removing the outboard nut, and then removing that nut as well. Continue on doing the same exact thing to the other stud.
Once you have both of those snugged up, continue on with your locking nuts. We'll bottom these out and then torque them to 20 foot pounds. Now we can install our fender liner and then the wheel. Make sure you have the front inside of this groove right here. Once you have that set into place, continue on with your push clip, press in the outer portion first, and then lock it in with the center. Now we can put in our mounting screws. One of ours was originally missing. Go ahead and put your wheel up on there. Now we can start on all six of our 21 millimeter lug nuts. Bottom them out. Get the wheel safely back on the ground and then torque each of the lug nuts in a crisscross manner to 98 foot pounds. Torqued. Make your way back up into the engine compartment. Reinstall your air filter. Once the air filter's on there, you're gonna continue on to the upper air filter housing. You'll notice you have three tabs on the upper housing, and you should have three holes along the bottom for them to fit into. One of ours is broken. Now with that said, we'll take this cover. We're also gonna put the end of it onto the air inlet tube. Slide that on there now. Now we can line up those three tabs with the lower housing. Once you have that lined up, snap in your locking clips. Continue on to your mass airflow sensor. Listen for a click, give it a tug to make sure it's secure. Continue on by securing the wiring to the upper housing. After that, you just wanna make sure that this hose is completely connected to the upper housing and then tighten your eight millimeter headed clamp. Make sure that's nice and tight so no dirty or unmetered air makes its way into the engine. Okay friends, we've got the truck back together. At this point, hop inside of it, start it up, make sure you have no check engine light and no exhaust leak. Aside from that, take it for a road test. Thanks for watching. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.